And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at Secret Moon. Now, Secret Moon has a bit of buzz when I look at it because it's designed by Seji Kanai, who did Love Letter. Now, Seji Kanai, in the instructions for his game, says that he likes games like Werewolf and th like that, but he doesn't like to talk that much. He's not as good at explaining it. No, if you ever play a game like Werewolf or Resistance, where there's hidden roles, there's all this back and forth talking. That's not how Secret Moon works. It works very differently. Let me show you. In this game, each player is going to be giving a, a role here. So the roles are going to be secret. The cards are going to be handed out secretly. We have a wanderer and a princess. The princess is trying to find a wanderer to share his tale with him. Sounds like a euphemism. I think they're in love. Okay. And then there is the minister who's chasing down the princess because for whatever reason, he's a jerk. He has a bunch of guards and he has a priestess. The priestess is actually on the wanderer and princess's team. Okay, whatever. So these cards are all going to be dealt out. Then each player takes a group of chips of their color that they might be using over the game. You're going to take a number of these cards, depending on how many players are in the game, and some of the leftover rolls, and the rolls will be slightly different depending on number of players. The leftover ones will be placed in the middle of the table. So everyone's going to have these cards here, and these cards simply tell you what number you're going in turn order, and they give you the different actions that you can take. You're going to take these actions in order three times. So there'll be three rounds. You'll, you're going to shuffle these cards between rounds, and then one of the two teams is going to win. So when it's your turn to go, hooray, I'm number six and it's my turn. You have different actions that you can take. You are allowed to look at someone else's card. Oh, ooh, they're the minister. When you do that, you're going to put one of your tokens on top to show that you've looked at their card. You can also look at one of the cards in the middle of the table. Those cards are called NPCs. Or you can target someone else and say, this is the only time you're allowed to talk, by the way, who goes there? If they are the princess or the wanderer, they'll say nothing. If they're the minister, they'll say, you fool, I'm the minister. If they're the princess or the guards, the priestess or the guards, I'm sorry, they'll say, it's just me. Whenever they do that, they have to take a minister marker. Okay? So if you're the minister or guards, you put one of those. So when you ask someone a question, you're kind of telling everybody who they are. You can also accuse somebody and say, Vassal, you're the minister. If I'm correct, I'm like, yeah, I'm the minister. If you're, if, I'm, if you're incorrect, then I say, you're wrong, and they have to turn over their cards. You have to be very careful. You can also hide or protect someone. You can take any player and turn their card sideways, and nobody can go after them. You can even do yourself that way. The only problem is you can't do that the third round of the game. You can also disrupt. You can take someone else and get rid of their turn order card. If they haven't taken one, they will lose. If they haven't taken their turn yet, they don't get to go. So if I'm one I can, and you're player six, I can say, oh, you're not going this round. However, if I do that, I am captured and I'm out of the game. So usually only the guard is going to do that to, to target someone else. Or if someone is revealed, you can capture them. They just turn upside down. They are now captured. And that's basically it. How does the game end? If all three rounds go, the princess team is going to win. If the minister is captured, the princess teams win. If the princess is captured at any point, the minister's team wins. Or if the princess and the wanderer are both revealed face up, then the minister team wins. After the third round, we see who wins or the game will end earlier. Remember, you're not allowed to speak, show your cards, or make anything. You're just trying to use these different actions that you have to help your team win, not forgetting that the priestess, even though she's blue, uh, will is on the team of the wanderer and the princess. From an outside perspective, if I'm looking at this game from a technical viewpoint, 
the game works. It has some interesting mechanisms and there's this kind of faint and counterfeit, you, because when you look at it, you're like, wait a minute, you only get three actions? You might not even get three actions. Someone can stop you from taking one of your three actions, or you can be captured on the very first turn, or someone might ask you, I mean, you might get fewer actions than that. Now realize the game takes 15 minutes, so don't sit there and weep as you're out of the game forever. You just sit there and wait till it's over. But there's very few things happening in this game. You have to decide the right action to take. And if you are an introvert, like Seji Kanai, then you will enjoy this because pretty much the game takes place in silence. The, only, the silence will be broken by the person who's teaching the game constantly explaining the rules or someone saying what action they're gonna take or the, it is me or it's just me, I'm sorry, is what you're supposed to say when someone says, who goes there? There's a, a little bit of talking, and even the, the, the silliness of that dialogue has caused us to laugh every time it comes up. So I can see how this works on that sort of level, and I don't like it. Okay, so just because I think the game works, and I'm not saying it's a bad game, I didn't like it because I want to talk. I want to be able to say, hey, this is what's going on here. This whole silent deduction style game, which in a kind of freezes table talk too, it's just not that interesting to me and it's almost too convoluted. We're sitting there going, okay, I, I, I can reveal you or I can accuse you or I can look at you or, you know, there's like different things that you can do and each of them is slightly different and variations and, it's just a little too convoluted for me that the game didn't play smoothly. The first time we played it, everyone was like, oh, okay, it took, a, that, it took a gameplay just to figure out kind of what was going on. It took a second gameplay for everyone to figure out, oh, that's what's going on. And you can go from there, but my problem is that I can see that there's some people who will want this more quiet, more cerebral type game that for the most part, me and many of the people I play with are looking for a more interactive game, a game where we can go back and forth and talk and discuss why, you know, Z is the traitor or why Jason is, you know, the, the, the princess or what have you. You know, we go back and forth on that. And so I think some groups might like this. This is a, if you like the, the very quiet and trying to figure out some maneuvering, then I'll recommend this to you. It's very interesting. And I'm curious to see if an American publisher will pick it up. But for me and my personal extroverted nature, this was just, just not interesting at all, really. And while I can look at it and say, interesting game, not one I want to play. Dice Tower Judgment, for me, missed the mark. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Shut the door! Shut the door! Shut the door! Boop! Boop!